So we see how wonderful God is, and then we'll say, wow, God, you're so wonderful, you're so wonderful. And then we can enjoy God's grace. We'll say, wow, God, you're so wonderful, you're so wonderful. What you do is so wonderful. I, I really enjoy that. I really, I'm overwhelmed by that. I enjoy that. So that is good Christian life, that we're overwhelmed by His grace and we are motivated to obey Him and follow Him. And then we want to proclaim His grace so that people understand and be motivated by His grace to serve God and obey God joyfully and to live a Christian life joyfully. So that's very important. This teaching, I really thank God. And, and many people heard that and they said, this is wonderful teaching. And I hope that you all would understand this wonderful grace and follow God. Okay, now God's grace for us, what God does to accept us, love us, bless us, help us, strengthen us, reward us. So God's grace includes, now this is what God does for us, His salvation, He saves us, He loves us. Now, love is also His nature, His inner quality of love. But He loves us, that is grace. He accepts us, He has wonderful, He prepares a wonderful plan for our life. He draws us to believe in Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit and also with God's Word, God's Word to draw us to believe in Him. And He, the Holy Spirit continues to work in our lives and protects us and prepare wonderful things in all areas of our life to bless us. Now God has prepared wonderful things. When we love Him and obey Him, we'll experience these wonderful things in our life. That our life will go higher and higher when we when we appreciate God's love and stay in His love, live in His love all the time, then we'll experience more and more wonderful things in our lives. That our life will go higher and higher. And He provides for us. And He raised our life, raises our life to a high level. And He trained our lives. And He provides opportunities for us to serve Him and bless, uh, to serve Him and to bless other people. And He remember our good deeds and reward us and give us heaven and so on. So He helps us to grow and He gives us all the resources, give us spiritual gifts and strength and joy and wisdom and the opportunities to bless people. He gives us all these things. And then when we obey Him, He will reward us and He will raise us up to a high level. So His grace is really sufficient. He's wonderful. His grace is sufficient us okay and also our our life is supposed to magnify Christ it's not just telling people what to do but to magnify Christ and also let Christ live in us Philippians 1 20 according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed but with all boldness as always so now also Christ will be magnified in my body whether by life or by death that Christ will be magnified in my body, that Christ will be magnified, will be glorified. People can see Christ in my life. That is Christian life. Some people think Christian life is being very stern to always command people what to do and tell people what to do and uh, rebuking people whenever they don't obey. Now, some Christians think that that is a good question, you know, some, some Christians are like this. They, when they see other people, they always tell people, you know, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you have to do this and do that. It's always telling people what to do, and they think this is glorifying God. Now, in a way it is, but it's not a good way. The good way is, the good way is living out Christ so that Christ is glorified in our lives, that we always talk about God. We always talk about the wonderful things of God and then people are attracted by what we say. You know, many times people tell me that when I talk, I always talk about the goodness of God. I always tell people how wonderful God is. I hope we all see this. God is really, really wonderful. He is really, really wonderful. But many people don't see His grace because many people grew up under the law and so they just see the law. Just see, when they read the Bible, they just see what the Bible tells us to do. They didn't see God's grace there. It's like a child. They don't, the child doesn't see the mother's love for him. 
He just see uh, the mother did this for me, but they, he didn't see the love behind that. We want to see not only the action of God, like He gives us joy, but we see behind that His graces. He accepts us, therefore He come to us, and He blesses us with His joy, and He He, you know, overwhelms us with His joy. He He comforts us with His joy. He He uh, take away our burden. Uh, so, when He gives us joy, He does a number of things together. He also heals our body, heals our soul. He gives us comfort, He gives us strength, He gives us joy. So He is a wonderful God. He is a wonderful God. He is a wonderful God. He, we want to glorify Him. We want to let Christ live in us. That is, I've been crucified with Christ. That my old self is, is no, no, no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me that it, we let Christ live in me, okay? So Christ should be living in us and guiding us and be magnified and glorified in our lives. So He should be living in us and changing our life. And then Christian life should not be just obeying. Our Christian life is not just obeying, but letting Christ live in us. So we let Christ live in us to motivate us. Our whole life should be magnifying Christ when we obey Him. So whole life should be showing Christ, that Christ is so kind, Christ is so wonderful, Christ is so caring, so we should be showing God's kindness all the time. So this passage here, that tells us to magnify Christ, it's not just our main Christian action, is to let Christ be glorified in our lives that we are which shows God's joy, God's love, God's caring, God's peace, God's wisdom. And we always talk about God's goodness so that people uh, are attracted by God. Okay, now, when we are motivated by God's grace, we should avoid saying just the law statement without promises from God. Because the Bible has all kinds of promises to motivate us. We avoid saying just you have to pray, if not you you not receive blessings. Or just by saying you have to pray, you have to pray. Now, we can say that. It's not wrong to say that. But the Bible has promises. So how can we motivate people to pray? God has wonderful plans for you. When you pray, you can receive these blessings. When you pray, God is very happy with you, and He'll pour His blessings upon your life. When you pray to Him, he, you're connected to Him. Then He, He can convey His grace to you, convey His peace and love and joy and wisdom to you. He can bring you into His His uh, wonderful plan. So prayer is not just requesting things from God. Some people think that prayer is just asking for things. Prayer is not just asking for things. Prayer is that we are connected to God and God changes our life. When we pray to God and love God, Hallelujah, God is so wonderful, God is so wonderful, then God will work in our life and change our life. He will give us peace and love and joy and He will change our life. He will, he will um, move in us. That is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. That is Him to you know, that God lives in us to motivate us to will and to act. That is, uh, that's in Philippians 2.13, is God working in us, moving in us, to, so that we'll will and to act, to follow the purpose of God. Now, when people sometimes they will say, okay, you have to obey, if not, God will punish you. So, now, it's true, but that's not the whole teaching of the Bible. The teaching of the Bible is that God gives you the strength to obey. God helps you to obey. God is happy when you obey. When you obey, He remembers you and He'll, He'll bless you. So God gives us the motivation to obey. He changes our life. He moves in us. He guides us. And He gives us strength. And He gives us the Bible to tell us how to obey God. And whenever we obey Him, He's very, very happy. So, 
God is doing all these things to help us to obey Him. But people just say, you have to obey. It's just telling people what to do. So many people's sermon become like a mother nagging his child, nagging her child, that the mother would just say, oh, you have to do your homework, you have to cook, you have to clean the house, you have to wash the dishes, you have to do this. And if you don't do it, you know, then you're not a good child and uh, you're not doing well. And so sometimes uh, they, uh, preachers talk like a mother, We're always telling people what to do. But we should be telling people how wonderful God is. And then when people hear God's wonderful blessings, what He has done to us, how He has changed us, that will motivate, motivate people. So I hope you will not just be telling people to pray, but we'll tell them. When you pray, God is very happy. And actually it's God moving you to pray. And Jesus is praying for you in heaven. And the Holy Spirit is uh, praying for you, inside you. So He's praying with us all the time. He's very happy when, we see, when He sees us pray and He will bless us and give us strength. So use the promises in the Bible to motivate people to obey and to pray and to follow God and to serve God. So that is what the Bible tells us to do. Uh, to, to, it's always to declare God. Okay, now some people just say you have to love God. You love God more, you don't love enough. But how to say, to motivate people? We say God loves you. When you love God, God He is greatly pleased and give you things eyes have not seen. So God changes your life so that you love. God put love into your life. God changes you by His love so that you love more. And then whenever you love God, He's very happy. And He'll prepare for you things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So when you love God, God is very happy with you. God is pleased with you, and God will bless you. And God will raise you up to a high level. And then some people will say, you know, so avoid just saying the law. You have to preach the gospel and serve God. Now sometimes we say that to ourselves. I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to serve God. But instead, we can say, God motivates you to serve Him. When you serve Him, He will honor you. And also, we can say more, okay? Because here, I just have a little space, I, but I can write more. For instance, it's God who changes you. So you have a nature to serve God. Remember how when you were saved, immediately you want to tell people about Jesus' salvation. Immediately you want to tell people about, you know, believing in Jesus. Follow Jesus. So, he changes us. That many people, when they are saved, immediately they have the motivation to, to obey, to serve God, to tell people about Jesus. That is Jesus changing us. And the more we stay in Him, the more He motivates us to grow. The more He motivates us to love God, to obey God, to serve God. And then also, uh, for many people, God draws us to into full time ministry. And generally, that comes from. God moving in our heart to change us, to give us the motivation to obey Him, to, to serve Him, to, to uh, tell people about Jesus. That, you know, um, for, for, for instance, for me, after I was saved, in a short time I already have this motivation. I want to become a pastor if that is God's will. So I said, you know, many people in the world don't know about you. I, I really want to tell more people about you that there is God that there is heaven. I want to tell people about God. And God give us, gave me this motivation. And that is from God. So we want to tell people more about God's work. It is Him who mo move us to will and to act. It's Him who changes us and give us the strength to serve God. Give us the wisdom to serve God. Give us the w wisdom to serve God. And I thank God after I am filled with the Holy Spirit, when Carlos and Acondia from Argentina came to lay hand on me, I experienced this great love and I really appreciate God's love. I have great motivation to turn away from sin and to obey Him totally. At that time, I had already been a pastor for 15 years and that experience changes my life. And I was motivated to really submit to God, obey God totally. And, to, and I noticed that 
that I can serve God with power by laying hand on people. I, and I want to enter God's wonderful plan. I want to serve God totally. I want to serve God wholeheartedly. I want to serve God until the last minute of my life. That is how I'm motivated because God is changing me. God has given me this wisdom and He can change you too when you see more, see God more in your life. Don't just see the commandments. Commandment is one part of the Bible. The main part of the Bible is about God, what He has done, His nature and His grace. This is a very important part of the Bible. But people just see the commandment, what to do, what to do. We want to see God's wonderful nature and His grace. So I hope you all understand this and say, Wow, God is so wonderful. And I want to tell people more about God's grace. And I want to live under God's grace. I want to enjoy God's grace. Okay, also we want to avoid criticizing people. Okay, so this here I have talked about our daily life that we don't just want to say you have to love God, you have to pray. And also in our sermons, don't just say that. But we always want to, when we say the how, how to obey God, we always tell them, you know, God is changing you. Have you noticed God's changing you? Have you noticed God's work in your life? He's doing wonderful things in your life. And when you respond to Him, He's very, very happy. So we want to motivate people with God's grace. And also avoid criticizing. Now, when people are in sin and they don't repent, now we have to, uh, at one point if they don't listen, we have to warn them also. But even when we warn them, we can tell them, God cares about you. Your life is wonderful. You have God has a wonderful plan in your life. He wants to do great things in your life. So when you sin, you destroy your life and you lose God's blessings. So do you want to stay in sin? That is motivating them to change, actually pointing out the sins. And at the same time with God's grace, God has a wonderful plan in your life. God wants to change your life. And when you sin, you're destroying God's plan in your life. And you suffer. Do you want to suffer? Or do you want Almighty God, who has everything in His hand to bless you? If God just opened His hand full of blessings to you, when He pours His blessings upon you, your life will go higher and higher. And I thank God, I really thank God. God pours His teaching into my life. God pours His nature and its grace into my life and I see that it's so wonderful and that changes my life and I thank God for that and I hope that you appreciate God's blessings and you really appreciate that and and really follow God and obey God and let God live in your life and see God's wonderful blessing even when we point out people's sin we want to motivate them with God's grace not just by criticism Okay, some people just criticize and say, you've done something bad, you are ruining your life, you have no hope. It just, you know, they think this way, you know, I tell them the problem and then they will change. Now, just by telling people the problem will not help people to change. We need to tell people God's grace. We don't just tell people the problem. Oh, so how can we say it? God wants to forgive you. Do you want to repent and hate your sins and obey God? Then God will bless you. God wants to bless your life. So please, you know, come to God and ask Him to forgive you. And you, if you repent, God is very happy. And actually, God is moving in your heart. Have you noticed that when you sin, God is moving your heart to turn you to repentance, to help you to repent. If you just respond to Him and obey Him, He's very, very happy. And He will change you. He'll motivate you to change and he'll when he you will change when you repent, God is very happy with you. Okay? Another way to criticize is something we want to avoid. I cannot tolerate you and your behavior. I don't like you. Now, so that that's that's very terrible things to say because this is attacking people. I don't like you. That's attacking the person. Instead we'll say God wants to bless your life. Do you want to let God mold your life? Do you want to go high in your life? God will bless you more and more. Your life is precious. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to ruin your life, to waste your life by sinning. When you don't obey God, you're ruining your life and you suffer from that. But when you love God and you obey Him, God is very happy and God will bless your life. 
So do you want to be blessed? Or do you want to be punished for your sins? So we can use grace to motivate people to obey Him. Okay? So I hope you see the importance of uh, motivating people with grace, balancing God's grace and His law, and this God's nature preaching method. It's telling people about God's nature and His grace. Now, if we want to motivate people with God's grace, first we need to learn to appreciate everything God has done and His wonderful nature. So we need to appreciate His grace and His nature first. Now, it's not just a head knowledge. You know, some people thought they attend this uh, training and then they will be changed and then they can preach with grace. I tell you, we need to first live under grace. Every day we say, God is here with me. He's in front of me and behind me. He's laying His hands upon me. He's with me. Whenever I come to Him, whenever, whenever I draw close to Him, He'll draw close to me. When I live in Him, He'll live in me and I'll bear much fruit. And whenever I obey Him, even when I give a cup of cold water to a little one, I'll by no means lose the reward. Whenever I do nice things to people, God will bless me. And if we live like that, we we'll say, God is happy with me when I love Him and obey Him. Therefore, I want to treat people nicely. Now, there are a number of pastors who preach the gospel, but they don't listen to the wife. They don't take care of the wife. They don't treat the wife nicely. They will say, my wife nags me. Now, it's true, the, the wife might nag you because you don't listen to her. And also the wife might be, you know, a, a nagging person, both sides. But many pastors did not see the importance of loving the wife. That's obeying the Word of God. Love your wife as Christ loves the church. But many people don't love their wife. They don't listen to her. They just tell the wife to submit to me. And it, it's just the law, just the law, not, not much love. Many people, before they get married, they will chase after the woman and then they will show much love. But after, you know, after uh, the, uh, uh, they marry, then they don't uh, show love that much. They just do the regular thing and they always a lot of demands. So, so I hope you say, wow, God is loving me, therefore I want to love people. So every day we say, when I pray to God, God is very happy with me and therefore I can rejoice. So I hope we all live with joy and say, well, God is happy with me whenever I love Him. God is very, very happy with me. God is blessing me. God is helping me. God is so wonderful. God is so wonderful. He is so wonderful. So I hope you all experience His love and peace when you come close to Him. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. So we first, we really appreciate and what God has done and enjoy every action. How God moves in our heart. How God gives us joy. How God gives us wisdom. How God teaches us. We appreciate that. And three, we learn to receive strength from God when we praise and love Him. God works all the time. So we, we receive strength from God when we love Him, when we obey Him. We can experience His presence and His love and joy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for working my life. You know, I, I try to stay in God's presence all day long. Whatever I'm doing, even when I'm preaching now, I'm enjoying His presence. God is loving me. Hallelujah. And I thank God whenever I love God with my whole mind, and, and my will and my feelings and my spirit, I can experience Him any moment. I can experience His joy and peace every moment. Thank God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whenever I think of God, joy will flow from me. Hallelujah. <laughs> and the joy will flow out. 
And I can feel power going through me. I can feel God's power going through me. I say, God, you're so wonderful. God, you're so wonderful. God, you're so wonderful. So we need to learn to receive strength from God. That will strengthen all the time. Ever since I experienced the Holy Spirit, uh, the infilling Holy Spirit, I have not experienced burnout. You know, in the past, I, I, I did feel despair and pressure. But after I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I treasured the relationship with God. And I enjoy His presence. Whenever I pray to Him, I experience His presence. I'm motivated by His presence. I'm strengthened by His presence. I'm strengthened by Him all the time. So I hope if you want to learn this God's nature preaching method, that we need to learn to enjoy Him, strengthened by Him, and appreciate His grace, appreciation appreciate all the wonderful things He has done in our life. So we thank God for that. So also we learn to see people from God's perspective. God, people are precious. God can change them. So we can see people are wonderful. People have their strength. Now they might have their weaknesses. But when we tell them God is wonderful, God wants to bless them. They are, when they are changed by God, then they become, they become wonderful people. So people have the potential to be changed by God. People can be changed by God. Now many people didn't understand this. They didn't understand that, that they, their life can be, people's life can be changed greatly. They just see the, the, the sins of the people. But we want to see the potential of people, that people's life can be changed, that, that God can bless their life, God can change their life, they can, their life can go higher and higher. So we can see People are precious. God has a wonderful plan in life. If they're not obeying God, then, then you know, there are problems in their life because they're not obeying God. But when they obey God, then the whole life will go higher and higher. And then we understand that it is God's grace that blesses us and changes us. And we say, all my changes are because God loves me. God cares about me. God blesses me. Therefore, my life changed. Therefore, we appreciate God. Therefore, we live, we, we are motivated by God's grace. So it's God's grace that changes me. So I want to tell people about God's grace. We practice to apply grace to ourselves. So we apply grace to ourselves and say, God is working in my life. God is blessing me. When I pray, it's God who gives me the peace and the love and the joy. And when I preach, it's God who gives me the wisdom and His Word immediately when I preach. And I thank God for that. You know, it's true when I preach, when I teach, it's God working in my life all the time, immediately. And I thank God for that. I really thank God for that. It's really wonderful. It's really wonderful. So when we are living under grace like that, then your Word will be full of grace. Then you're not you will not be just telling people you have to pray, you have to repent, you have to serve God. You know, we don't, we will not be just telling people that. We'll, but we'll tell them, God has a wonderful plan in your life. Have you noticed how God is working in your life? So you will always want to tell people how God is working in your life, how God is changing you, God is motivating you, God is guiding you, God is giving, God is giving you wisdom and and kindness and goodness and compassion and changes your life and help you to repent and all these things have you noticed that it's God working in your life so when you respond to him and obey him he's very very happy and he'll bless your life and he'll raise your life to a high level that way we first apply grace to our life and enjoy his grace then we'll be motivated to change okay now if people are motivated by God's law to serve him then uh, then what they're saying to themselves, oh, uh, you know, that there are some people who serve God, but they are motivated by God's law. That